A huge weather pattern change will be coming to the United States over the next few days, bringing more significant severe weather, including damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes. Additionally, our temperatures are going to take a big swing, as we are currently dealing with record-breaking high temperatures, but we will start to cool down a little bit later this week, but we may be right back to record-breaking temperatures by this upcoming weekend. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days, and we'll begin with what's happening across the country today and right now we got some of the remnants of our severe weather event that took place yesterday across the Great Plains. Overall yesterday's severe weather event was not super big but we end up having a few tornadoes in addition to damaging winds that extended anywhere from Minnesota all the way back into West Texas and we are expecting more severe weather over the next few days out of this particular storm system which will be primarily focused towards the northern central plains the Midwest and also back into the Ohio Valley where all hazards of severe weather will continue to be a possibility but otherwise, it is very dry right now along the East Coast and in the Southeast. Biggest reason why is because we have a ridge that is currently dominating back over in the Southeast, which is actually helping to bring moisture into the Great Plains, which is why we are continuing to see so many severe weather events take place right now, anywhere from the Central and Northern Plains all the way back into the Midwest. And yesterday's severe weather event overall was pretty much just isolated severe weather, but a couple interesting notes. We actually had three tornadoes yesterday, two of which were on the same storm in Northwestern Minnesota. We actually had one tornado earlier in the day back over in western Illinois, so that was a little bit of an outlier, but otherwise the majority of what we saw yesterday was mostly large hail and damaging winds across a widely scattered region. And this may come to a surprise for a lot of you, but we actually have a 70% chance within the next 24 hours of a tropical storm forming in the central Atlantic Ocean. The reason why this is a big deal is because this would be the first named storm of the season, even though that this will be a fish storm, and on top of that, that would mean that we would at least have one named storm in all of June, which the last time we did not have a named storm in June was 2019. So this is at least a step forward into a slightly more active hurricane season, which once again, we are expecting a active hurricane season across the Atlantic Ocean. It's just going to take a little bit more time, but I do anticipate that we'll start to see some tropical storms and hurricanes, maybe not too far from the United States later into July or August. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the United States over the next couple of weeks. And to look at that, we are going to look at our mid-level flow and our jet stream, beginning with what's happening right now. We currently have troughing that is located back along the west coast which is helping to aid an increased risk of severe weather for the next several days but on top of that we have a large ridge that is currently along the east coast and this is why it is just so hot along the east coast and another reason why areas like virginia maryland and even new jersey and connecticut will have high temperatures in the low 100s today is because of this high pressure system so that is one of the reasons why it is just so hot and dry but as we get closer to the middle of this week that high pressure system will move a little bit further off to the west which should bring at least a little bit of relief, especially over to the northeast, but we are going to continue to see at least some modest troughing back over along the west coast and in the Rockies, which means that we'll likely have a couple of shortwave trough ejections across the northern plains in the Midwest, which will continue to lead to an elevated risk of at least some scattered showers and thunderstorms in addition to severe weather. By Thursday and Friday, this weather pattern is going to get, I think, a little bit quieter. We're still going to have maybe a trough or two that'll go right over the Rockies or in the northern plains, which should still lead to some severe weather by by Friday and Saturday, but I think generally speaking, our flow is going to get a little bit more zonal, which means everything is going to get a lot more flat, and we're not going to have these big dips in the jet stream, which means that our severe weather potential by this weekend should be at least somewhat lower, but there will still be severe weather. I just don't anticipate it to be as significant unless you're in the northern plains or the upper Midwest. Things should be somewhat quiet back over in the southern plains and the southeast, and then by next week is when I think we're going to start to see ridging develop back over in the high plains, which means things may get a little quiet around the weekend and also into early next week, but we should start to see some big troughs return again by around the 4th of July. Now, that is, again, a general overview of what's upcoming over the next 7 to 10 days. There will likely be some changes to the forecast, but I think overall the most significant severe weather for the next 14 days will be over the next 3 to 4 days, and then there may be some more severe weather as we get closer to the 4th of July that could be significant. And we are going to talk more about the upcoming severe weather in just a moment, but I do want to point out that the temperatures are going to be still very warm over the next several days. Even though the warmest of the air that we've been dealing with is going to move out Tuesday and Wednesday, we are still going to have above average temperatures in place for most areas in the northern plains back along the east coast by Thursday and Friday. And unfortunately, there are no cold fronts or at least strong cold fronts on the near horizon that would bring us any sort of relief. So be ready for a very warm stretch of weather over the next seven days. And we are still anticipating record-breaking high temperatures over the next couple of days. High temperatures today will be in the upper 90s and low 100s 
hazards for most of the East Coast. On the other hand, the Northern Plains is finally getting some relief from the heat. Many areas were in the 100s yesterday, or at least in the 90s in Minnesota. We are starting to see temperatures back into the 60s and 70s for today. And then Tuesday, really not much different. It'll be a little bit colder if you're back over in Wisconsin and Northern Michigan. But notice the temperatures will even be warmer. We could hit 103 degrees in Hartford, Connecticut tomorrow afternoon, which is just absurd for this time of the year. And we don't usually see temperatures that high at all, even in southern New England. Boston could also be 102. And one thing I also want to point out is that this ridge is really not going anywhere for the rest of June or even early July. And this almost classifies as a death ridge at this point because we are expecting a prolonged period here, of very warm weather. And on top of that, there will be really not a whole lot of severe weather, especially if you're in the southeast or along the east coast. And in addition to that, it's going to be pretty dry. Not a whole lot of storms or rain are in the forecast. So this is definitely something that you definitely want to keep in mind. It is going to be a prolonged stretch here of hot weather. If you have any sort of respiratory issues, definitely make sure that you are limiting outdoor time. Climate Prediction Center also agrees that above average temperatures will likely continue into early July. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days. And we'll begin with today, which is Monday. And we have a slight risk of severe weather in place from the Great Lakes back into northern Kansas and a marginal threat from the Texas Panhandle back into the upper peninsula of Michigan, where damaging winds will be the biggest concern today. And we are also expecting widespread storm activity here. So be ready for storms almost no matter what. Overall, though, severe weather will be pretty isolated to widely scattered. Large hail is also a possibility, but not anticipating anything too significant in that department. And then there is a potential for a couple of tornadoes. This is not really going to be something that is super easy to forecast here. We could have a tornado literally anywhere in this area. I think if we get any tornadoes, they'll likely be on the brief side of things. But generally speaking, we could see a couple of tornadoes. So make sure that you're staying weather aware and have multiple ways to receive warnings. And if for some reason a storm does appear concerning later today, we will likely go live. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we do go live. And then on Tuesday, the risk of severe weather will expand from New England all the way back over into the high plains where all hazards of severe weather will once again be possible. But severe weather overall will be fairly isolated across the board with our most concentrated area being back over in the high plains where damaging winds and large to very large hail will be the biggest concerns. I don't really expect much hail if you're back over in the northeast or even back into the Ohio Valley. I think damaging winds will really be the only concern in those areas. There's also a chance for an isolated tornado or two that'll be mainly in Wyoming, western Nebraska, northern Colorado, and western South Dakota, so make sure that you're staying weather aware in these areas. And then on Wednesday, our threat of severe weather will continue across the northern plains, midwest, back into the northeast, and even a small area back over in the southeast where damaging winds hail and a couple of tornadoes will be a possibility. I do think we'll end up seeing higher probabilities in a future outlook, mainly back over in the northern plains in the midwest, where there could be a corridor of significant damaging winds and maybe even a couple of tornadoes around the Twin Cities in Iowa. So something to keep an eye on. It's not a guarantee as of right now, which is why the Storm Prediction Center has hesitated on introducing at least a slight risk in this area. But I do think we'll end up having a slight risk in a future outlook for this particular region. Now let's go day by day with the timing of severe weather. And we'll begin with today, which right now we have some scattered showers and thunderstorms across Wisconsin. These will weaken by around 11 to 12 o'clock. And then eventually by the early afternoon, we are going to see an explosion of showers and thunderstorms from Des Moines, Iowa, back into central Wisconsin, where scattered damaging winds, a little bit of large hail, and maybe a brief tornado will be a possibility. By 4 to 5 o'clock, these storms are going to continue, but notice how they are fairly disorganized, so generally speaking, the threat of tornadoes is going to be low. It will really have to depend on an outflow boundary interaction or just a little pocket of elevated wind shear, or maybe one of these storms staying discreet, but all those things are going to be hard to come by today, I think, in this environment. By around 7 to 8 o'clock, we'll continue to have showers and thunderstorms out there in southern Wisconsin, back into central Iowa, and also just outside of Kansas City, where damaging winds, large hail, and an isolated tornado will continue. And then by around 10 to 11 o'clock tonight, it's mostly just rain across areas like Iowa. And I do want to point out that with these storms overlapping throughout the afternoon and evening, there is going to be a potential for localized flooding, mainly in eastern Nebraska, back into Iowa, and also into southern Wisconsin. So turn around, don't drown if you are on the roadways. And then in the central plains, storms will initiate a little bit later than what we're going to be seeing in the Midwest. I think storms will pop off around 5 to 6 o'clock in central Kansas back into southern Nebraska where damaging winds hail and a low tornado risk will exist. If there was one area that I think a tornado would happen today, it'll probably be in southeastern Nebraska. May get a discrete supercell down there somewhere where there will be enough wind shear for a tornado, but generally most of these storms will be hail and wind producers and been by around 9 to 10 o'clock, everything is for the most part falling apart, but damaging winds should continue with any storms that are still severe just after sunset. And then on Tuesday, our threat of severe weather will continue across the central plains.
plains where storms are going to fire off right around three to four o'clock central time back over in southeast wyoming and also a few just outside of denver damaging wind tail are the main concerns initially but if dew points are able to be high enough there will be enough wind shear for a tornado or two may get an isolated discrete supercell in eastern wyoming that could track into western nebraska with a tornado threat and we may even see a couple more discrete supercells try to fire off in northeastern colorado so keep an eye on a potentially elevated tornado threat here tomorrow afternoon and early evening across northeast colorado and western nebraska these storms will eventually cluster together by around seven to eight o'clock turning into mainly a damaging wind threat across central and western nebraska there may still be a brief tornado risk though going into central and eastern nebraska during the late evening and overnight hours and then as we go into wednesday morning that line of storms would push into parts of the upper midwest and then early wednesday morning the remnants of that line of storms will move into the midwest and we may see storms fire up again during the afternoon back over around and just south of the twin cities and also into iowa with damaging winds large hail and maybe an isolated tornado or two being a possibility so this is something that we're gonna have to keep an eye on as i've already alluded to we may see a slight risk of severe weather in this general vicinity for large hail and damaging winds i think the tornado risk is overall still going to be on the low side of things if our storm mode is more uh clustered and not really discrete but if things do end up tending more towards discrete supercells we definitely could see a more elevated tornado risk here as there will be a lot more wind shear with a shortwave trough so a lot of stuff to keep an eye on here over the next few days so make sure you are subscribed to the channel as we will be providing you frequent updates regarding these severe weather events and then across the rest of the country for the middle and end of this week we are expecting showers and thunderstorms to continue with severe weather still being a possibility even on thursday across the midwest overall a lot of these days that we are talking about for severe weather are mesoscale days which means that we may see tornadoes we may see very large hail we may see damaging winds but it's gonna be very sporadic and a lot of these events are going to be localized compared to some of the outbreaks that we saw in april and may these are not your typical severe weather outbreak patterns instead we can still see significant severe weather but it's going to come down to small scale features and then by friday and saturday our weather pattern is going to get a little bit less active mainly because of our zonal flow in our jet stream by the weekend which means that we will still see at least some severe weather but i don't think it's gonna be that significant just isolated to widely scattered severe weather in the northern plains in the midwest this weekend and then early next week is when i think a high pressure system will build across the great plains and if this does end up happening we are probably going to see at least a break from severe weather just before the 4th of july i do think severe weather will make another return around and just after the 4th of july so get ready it's still an active weather pattern here for at least the next few days and then we may have a break this weekend and as always thank you all so much for watching today's forecast if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe down below we may have another video tomorrow but don't be surprised if we don't if we do not then we'll likely have a video on wednesday live stream is possible today tomorrow and as well as wednesday so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates